All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Thor Tech mod, which is being made by forum user Jade of Mar. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is an amazing suite of electrical propulsion systems for you to enjoy, and they are pretty awesome. So let's head right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at what this mod does add in. So let's grab ourselves a Mark II cockpit for uh, size comparison today and then of course turn on our janitor's closet mod filter to just have on deep sky and at this point I should mention right off the bat here that this is still very much a work in progress so there are gonna be some things missing some things that still need a little bit of work but at this moment it is still an amazingly awesome mod to play with and thus why we are here and so let us look at the first two parts which which of course are in the command pod section and we'll have a gander at the DS Voyager Mark II inline cockpit which can hold two crew members with a minimum of one. It does have a built-in data transmitter, a lifting surface reaction wheel, the typical crew report, 50 electric charge and 25 monopropellant and of course it does fit in with the Mark II fuselage system and it overall is a pretty fun little addition there. Now, uh, as for the work in progress part, it does not yet have an internal view, but I believe that is something that is being worked on, so hopefully we'll get one soon enough. Now, the other cockpit is a radially attached one, which is the DS uh, Spitfire cockpit. Only holds one crew member, but does have a reaction wheel, typical crew report, and electric charge of 50, so pretty bare bones all in all, but being radially attached it does make for an interesting thing, which I do quite like, which is fun. All right, so the next category is, of course, down in engines, as we have nothing here in fuel tanks, because, well... It is all about electrical propulsion, so we have a lot of engines where the predominant resource is going to be electric charge, which means <laughs> you're going to need a lot of batteries and a lot of generators. Thankfully, we do have some stuff down here to help with that. But the first thing we have is the DS Ascendant VTOL engine. It is three meters in size and does have a thrust of, uh, well, max thrust of 702 kilonewtons using electric electric charge and air intake. It does have a vectoring range of one degree and of course being a large VTOL fan does have its own air intake for its usage. And uh, as you can see it is a very, very large fan. Three meters in size so if you are looking to make some sort of floating platform yeah, this might be your tool of choice there. Very nice. The next three engines, I think, quite frankly, are my favorite parts of this entire mod. The Japier Warp Jet engine, and we have it in three different sizes. The small, type 1, the medium size, type 2, and the even bigger, type 3. As you can see, they are massive. They are big beautiful looking and they produce a lot of thrust now on the type 2 you have uh, well actually in all of them not just the type 2 but you have two distinct engine modes one which will use the standard in-game electric charge and that's gonna have a lower max thrust for the type 1 it's 250 the type 2 it's 400 and the type 3 again is 400 kilonewtons but if you then use store charge which the engine does actually have its own storage charge container in here it will give you a sort of sudden quick burst of more thrust so for the type 1 you'll go all the way up to 500 kilonewtons and the type 2 and type 3 will go up to 800 kilonewtons with that store charge and that is pretty awesome now it's gonna burn through it pretty quickly but it is gonna give you that extra oomph that your plane might need now all of them do have a gimbling on them for a little bit of extra control they do have a resource converter so you can take electric charge and make it into store charge at a one-to-one -one rate so 90 per second on the electric charge being 90 per second on the store charge 
average, at least on the Type 3. Is the rate the same on all of them? Uh, yes, it is. So 90, 90, and again. Oh no, the Type 1 is 45, 45. And they do also have their own air intake, electric charge batteries, and of course that stored charge I mentioned earlier. And they just look amazing look at those darn things i do love them and of course you can either close or open their air intakes which is useful sadly no animation to show it but you know fun now the next engine we have is the chemonade a zero turbo fan and again we have this in three sizes we have a very small little a zero turbo fan a slightly larger a one and then the even even bigger, oh boy, A2, which is just gorgeous. I do like these giant turbo fans. Now, the A0 will have a max thrust of 29 kilonewtons, the Kemenade A87, and the Kemenade A2 being up to 730. Now, of course, they will use increasing amounts of electric charge and require more air intake to function, but overall, they are pretty pretty amazing turbofan engines. Now the next we have, if we just pop these off, is the Kinegar A0 prop fan, which of course we then have another size, the A1 prop fan here, which uh, you are going to require fire spitter for these things to move. As you can see, they are propellers. And the A0 has 27 kilonewtons of max thrust, again using electric charge and air intake. And the A1 has 83 Three kilonewtons of thrust. Very fun and just a cool little propeller. Who doesn't like that? Now next we have the Razor Vital Warp Jet which uh, has 160 kilonewtons of thrust and a nice gimbling range there of 1.75 degrees. There we go, a good little engine. The next is the Voyager 1.25 Aero Spike. Uh, there we are, which does produce a maximum thrust in vacuum of 180 in atmosphere 144. Now this one actually does require liquid fuel and oxidizer, but it does also require a lot of electric charge at 117 per second. So it sips that liquid fuel, but uses a whole lot of electrical charge. And the same deal with the final engine, the Mark II Aero Spike, which we can pop that right on there. Again, requiring small amounts of liquid fuel and oxidizer, but a lot of electric charge. And this one will produce up to 220 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum, 176 in atmosphere. So very fun there. Now in command and control, we do have an air vernier engine. So a nice little RCS thruster there, which does use air intake and electric charge. So, uh... Interesting. I don't typically use RCS in atmosphere, but hey, if you need, there you go. We then have nothing until we get down here to aerodynamic, where we have a number of air intakes. The first is a VTOL intake for the uh, that love, lovely three meter size thing there. So you have, oh boy, a big hubcap looking thing that uh, will take in quite a bit of air though, which is always useful. We then have a railroad ramp intake, which is gigantic, but looks cool and works really nicely with those warp jet engines that I love so much. And again, just a very large air intake. We then have a ram circular intake, so just another option there, and as you can see, fits the smaller 1.25 size, which is always good. Let's check these out. And then the last two are interesting. They are intakes, but they are also resource converters. So we have the RBM variable geometry intake, which we can pop right there does go radially, but also does have a rear attachment point, so we could we put it back there. There we go, pop it there. And then we also have the Mark II intake, the Voyager Mark II, which if I spin around and actually flip it back normal side, there we go, is another very cool looking air intake. Goes very nicely with the inline cockpit here. So rather than having that cockpit out front, you have this uh, air intake up front, which is very cool. And what these will do, they are 
air intakes, but what they can do is actually distill the atmosphere. They bring in an air intake and turn it into liquid oxygen, which can then be turned into oxidizer. So you can use these to refill your oxidizer on your vessel. They scoop in the air and it converts it to that liquid oxygen, which then gets stored inside an internal tank. And then using that liquid oxygen and electric charge, it will create oxidizer. So a very interesting idea and always cool. If you do have some sort of space mining rig, you can mine for your fuel and then use this to make your oxidizer if that's how you want to go, which is pretty cool. Now then we have nothing again until, oh yes, thermal category where we have the DS Titanium Converter, or Convector rather, I apologize, which is an active radiator to help with any heat issues, which you may ask, well, what heat issues? Oh, oh, oh boy, heat issues with electrical generation. There we are, we have two nuclear reactors in here of a varying size, so we have this larger one here and a smaller one right there, and these things are gonna produce a lot of heat, but the Sinner S engine will, or, well, reactor rather, will, uh, you know, provide a pretty impressive amount of uh, energy at 300 per day, using, of course, enriched uranium and uh, producing depleted fuel, which, uh, you know, is the thing you gotta worry about, but hey, Okay. And the larger M reac reactor, center M, will produce up to 900 per second. Which, did I say day or second with that? I meant second. I was seeing the depleted fuel in said day. So, yes, this nuclear reactor does 300 per second. The larger one doing 900. And they will need these little convectors on there to keep things cool. Now, besides that, here in the electrical category, we have a nice little Mark II battery pack, which will hold 4,000 electric charge. We then have a three different sizes of battery packs which can go radially or in line the mark zero at 400 mark one at 4,000 and mark one two meter at 8,000 so you can do a lot of electric charge there we also then have some in line ram air turbines which will take your uh air intake power, turn it into mill power to create electric charge. So the 1.25 ram air turbine will produce five electric charge per second. There we are. The 2.5 meter will produce 15 per second. So long as of course you, you know, are moving because that it needs that air intake and then we have a mark ii ram air intake which will again produce a five using that mill power which is pretty cool i like that it's wind power my friends and then finally we have an interesting kerbal inventory system item of a dsk pad for your kerbals to throw in their inventory and you know have a have a little tablet computer it's a thing. There you go. So, with all the parts out of the way, let's actually take a look at a plane I made earlier with this. And, oh boy, like I said, I really love those warp jet engines, so I had to make this. We, of course, use the inline cockpit. We have that uh, Voyager Mark II air intake. We have four of the Ram air turbines for electrical generation, one of the Mark II battery packs. We then do need a little bit of liquid fuel and oxidizer for that Voyager Mark II aerospike engine. And then I've got the two warp jets over here, the Type 1s, the ramp intake which is always useful and, you know, just some standard aerodynamic MacGuffins. Uh, and I also, just for the heck of it, threw on the uh, Spitfire cockpit. Uh, just to show you, of course, like I said, neither of them do have interiors right now, but still, you know, to show off that you can fit three Kerbals total in this thing. And, of course, to give you an idea of something fun you can make. So let us ignite the uh, Aerospike engine first. Let's actually turn on our resources, because, well, oh god. Uh, even though I like this plane and it works, oh boy, it does not produce enough electrical power to keep these warp jets going, because those babies use a lot. But we can actually keep the aerospike going at minimal levels, so let's, uh, throttle up and you can see this baby just drain electrical charge because, well... 
I didn't plan ahead in with enough uh, electrical power. But we should be able to take off here pretty easily. There we go. Let's put up the gears. Now, what we're going to do is throttle down to about a half or so and set off the warp jets because they're really going to drain the electrical power. And what's going to happen is there we go. We have the warp jets are running and we're about to run out of electric charge. So the warp jets automatically are going to switch to their stored charge to give us that extra oomph. There we go, and as you can see, we are rapidly accelerating at just half throttle all the way up to almost 400 meters per second before the warp jet died out. Now, we can still fly here on the aero spike with this thing, but yeah, that just goes to show you how much power this thing uses overall. I mean, it's just gonna suck through things very, very quickly. That's why, of course, it does have those nuclear reactors in the pack for you to use, though they don't quite work so well with the Mark II inline cockpit, but uh, perhaps we'll get a Mark II nuclear reactor in the future. Again, this is a work in progress mod. But yes, that is Thortech, a very cool set of electric propulsion systems. I love this thing so much, especially these amazing warp jet engines, but all of them, they have a place in pretty much, I think, any game, and can really add a fun bit of diversity to the already pretty substantial amount of propulsion mods we have out there. So if you'd like to check this out for yourself, and I would definitely recommend that you do so, you can go to the link in the description as per usual, but that is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!